Hello and thanks for tuning in to my YouTube channel, Pickleball Pick Apart. My name is Rory. I take pickleball games off of YouTube and I pick apart the play on the court. Watching my videos will help make you a better pickleball player. In this video, a mixed doubles gold medal match played in Opelika, Alabama. The age group is 60 plus. The level is 4.0. It is the Atlantic South Diamond Regional. Make no mistake about it, these are highly skilled pickleball players at the 4.0 level. There's something that one player does time and time again that makes the difference in the outcome of the match. What's the mistake the player makes over and over again? The answer is, the player is using tennis strategy to try and win a pickleball match. Now, pickleball may look a little bit like tennis, but pickleball is simply not tennis. A player cannot play pickleball like tennis and expect to win. Watch and learn a valuable lesson and see the mistake that if you make it, it could cost you a gold medal as well. Let's go. This gold medal match consists of one game played to 15. A big shout out to the YouTube channel, Huddy Boy Pickleball, for doing a great job of posting YouTube videos like this. Check them out sometimes. Here are the players. In the near court, you have Julie Strauss, who is in the pink outfit. Her partner is David Gunter. In the far court, you have Carlo Tanko, and his partner is also named Julie. Her name is Julie Fairbanks. So I will refer to the lady in pink right here as Julie. The lady in the back court, I'm going to uh, use her last name, which is Fairbanks. Again, these are highly skilled pickleball players. This is for the gold medal. You will see some excellent play, but again, there is one flaw that I am going to point out. I am not going to show the entire match. I'm just going to show you examples of kind of what went wrong for one team. So let's go. There's a third shot drive. Getting into a firefight here, goodbye. Yep, you just can't hit the ball up quite that high. Third shot drive, just waiting for it. Fifth shot drive, no. Seventh shot drive, cannot move up. Ninth shot drive, 11th shot drive, and she just could not get to the ball. So I had mentioned a fatal flaw, and watching this, as you can see what happened, uh, Fairbanks, Julie, Julie Fairbanks in the back court, she had a third shot drive, she had a fifth shot drive, a seventh, a ninth, and 11th shot drive. None of that allowed her to move forward to the non-volley zone. She did not try to reset the ball. She thought she could overpower the team on the near court by hitting that drive. I don't think she can. Let's see if she continues that. Now, that is something you're only going to be able to see when the team in the far court is serving and is hitting a third shot. She is going to return the ball here, so I'm assuming she's going to immediately run to the non-volley zone, which she did. And at that time, Julie in the near court was not able to move forward. Goodbye. Again, another shot where the third shot drive did not work and they got stuck in the back of the court and in no man's land. And Carlo just put it right at their feet and they were not able to get it back. So let's see what Julie does this time. Okay, so what happened there actually is that was a very shallow return by Julie in the near court. It allowed Fairbanks in the back court to move up. Otherwise, I think she would have hit a drive and stayed in the back of the court. Let's see what happens here. That's much better. There's the drive. And uh, again, not effective. Look at this serve. That's kind of interesting. Here's Julie's attempt again. Again, look where she is. She is nowhere near the non-volley zone because she keeps hitting these drives. She hits this backhand here, and this ball should be put away by David. Still can't move up. Still can't move up. Still playing like a tennis player. Oh, there she goes and tried to get to it, and Carlo hit it into the net. Okay, let's go back and look what happened here. You know, I see this all the time with beginner players, and it 
still happens at the 4.0 level. Julie just made the mistake, and it is very clear what happened. Here comes the serve. Here comes the return. It's going to be a shallow return. She took a little while to get going, and what happens is she's going to hit this ball when her feet are still moving forward. She, her feet are not planted. She is not set, and a lot of times when you hit a ball moving forward, it goes right into the net. Look at Julie. She's still moving forward, and boom, right into the net. You have to get your feet planted before you swing at the ball. So feet before swing. That time, Julie's feet were still moving forward. That's a nice third shot drop right there by Julie. Just excellent. She just hit that shot a little too high. And Carlo is asking for some applause from the fans in the stands. Let's see what you got, Fairbanks. Third shot drive again. She moved up that time, getting into a firefight here. And that is hit behind her, <laughs> hit the top of her paddle. There's that serve again, and that time he hit it out. I guess he's using some type of lobbing serve strategy. Not sure why. Third shot drive again. Fifth shot right into the net. That was a great shot by Julie in the near court. Nope. And the unforced error. You know, a lot of times in a very competitive match with skilled players like these, what determines a winning team and a losing team are unforced errors. I mean, that was just a very easy put away on the lob, and she hit it right into the net. And there's another unforced error. David's backhand, just not good enough on that shot. There's a lob David just hit. And he hit it out. So that's another unforced error. For some reason, it's taking... Julie and David, quite some time to get going here. Third shot drive. And right there, Julie is just waiting for it. She missed it again. Now, pickleball is a game of scoring runs. And right now, like I mentioned, I just don't think in the near court, Julie and David are warmed up, are they ready to play, they are just made a bunch of unforced errors. It's nothing that the other team on the other side of the court is really doing great, but maybe they'll get with it again. Once they get the ball back and they have the ball in hand, they may be able to score some points. Right now, I don't think they scored a point, and I think the score is four or five to nothing. Third shot drive, and he, she hit it out. And now she's calling a timeout, which is a very good move in this situation. You can tell she's frustrated. You know that they are better than they are playing. She's going to get some water or some Gatorade, Powerade, whatever it is she's drinking. Think about it, regroup, and get back out on the court. Great move by them to call a timeout at that point because they're down five to nothing. Third shot, drive again. Fifth shot, drive attempt with the backhand and hit it right into the net. Fifth shot drive, keeping them back. Fairbanks not able to move up and got her, got her right in no man's land. And this is kind of what I'm talking about. Fairbanks, Julie Fairbanks is not moving forward. She continues to hit hard drives from the baseline. They do not allow her to move up. So I've got to think at one point, or maybe she still is, a tennis player and prefers to stand back and hit drives instead of drops or resets into the kitchen in order to allow her to move up. Pickleball is not tennis. Right now they are ahead five to nothing. I just don't think she can stand back there and continue to win points. The only reason they've gotten the points is because David and Julie in the near court have made a number of unforced errors. Now that's a third shot drive, right into the kitchen. 
That is a shot that Julie Fairbanks in the far court has shown the propensity not to do, whereas Julie in the near court hit that third shot. She hit the fifth shot out, but hey, look, she got the third shot drop in. Whoop. I've moved up a little bit in the game. That put away makes the score 5-6. Previously, the score was 0-6, so David and Julie have scored five points in a row. He's hitting some lofts here, some lobs, lofted lobs. That's not going to work, I don't think. Oh, nice defense. Got the roll of the tape. There's another lob. And look at this. This is just a great point. Again, these are very, very good pickleball players. A great angled shot by Fairbanks in the far court, And that was just really, really nice. A great point by all four players. Third shot. Keeping Julie back. Just a great shot by Julie in the near court. Notice that Fairbanks did not move up at all. Kept her back and put it away. Here's another third shot attempt. She hits another drive, keeping her back again. And there's the unforced error. And that ball probably would have been out. Third shot drive. Carlo post it. Look what Julie's doing. She's continuing to move back. She's not standing her ground. Now she's in the back of the court and she loses the point. So that is exactly a prime example of the flaw that Julie Fairbanks is making. She continues to hit hard drives. She tries to move up. When she moves in a few feet, she retreats. She does not stand her ground. Here's another opportunity for her to Hit a third shot, drop, and she just popped it up right into Julie's put-away zone. Now the teams have switched sides. I believe the score is eight for Carlo and Julie and six for David and Julie. There's that lofted serve again. There's another. Look, look, look what she can, look, look, a great job that Julie in the forecourt did. Just kept Fairbanks back. Just not able to hit a third shot drop or any type of reset. She thinks she can get it done by hitting the hardest shot she can from the baseline. There it is again. Oh, great job by Carlo to hit those balls with his backhand. He was right in the center of the court. He was getting to the ball before they got back to Fairbanks. So great job by him. Carlo is an excellent player. There's that lob serve again. Third shot drive. Fifth shot, keeping her back. And she just hits it right into the net. I know that I am repeating myself, but it, it's very clear what Fairbanks is doing incorrectly. Another opportunity. Hits the drive again, and that time she hit it after hitting just a ton of top spin drives. That's the first time that she has won a point with it. No chance to move up. Absolutely no chance to move up. Trying to play pickleball like tennis and win from the baseline. What a shot. I mean, Julie is just fantastic. Getting a little applause from the other Julie. Let's go and see exactly why Julie was able to hit that shot. And it's very obvious. Watch what happens here. Here's the serve. Here's the return. Now look where... Fairbanks is. She is at the center of the court. Why is she right here and leaving all of this open? Is that a mistake? Her partner is here. Maybe she was thinking that Julie in the far court was going to go here. Julie sees how wide open this court is and watch how good of a shot she hits. I mean, it is just perfect. Boom. Scorpion, trying to do the scorpion thing right here. Can't quite make it. That almost hurt. Third shot. 
Third shot drive at the partner. Too high. Carlo trying to get that ball back. He tried his best to defend by bending his knees, getting his paddle down. He did a great job of trying. It just did not work because Fairbanks hit the ball just too high for David to put away. There you go again. That's the third. That's the fifth. That's the seventh. This is the ninth. Now he's going to hit it over there. Goodbye. Ooh, got it back. What? <laughs> I guess never give up. I mean, they were totally out of that point almost the entire time. And, I mean, look, Fairbanks can't believe it. She's going, oh, my goodness. How did we ever manage to get that point? The reason is just Julie hit it into the net. Never give up. Keep trying, even though she was out of position the entire uh, rally. Okay, I'm going to show you what happens here. And it's, it's, again, this is another mistake. Watch right here. Here comes the drive. It, it gets some roll of the tape. She's, try, she's moving up. So look what Fairbanks is doing right here. It hit the tape. It rolled in, giving her some time to move far. So she moved forward. Here's the ball way over here. Now she's still in no man's land. She should be all the way up to the non-volley zone. Here comes the ball. Now look what happens. This is a perfect reset into the kitchen. Fairbanks was right here. She should have moved up. What does she do? She retreats, even though where this ball is hit, there's really nothing Julie can do with it. But Fairbanks backs up. Now she's having it hit the ball from, from the back of the court, whereas if she would not have retreated, she would have been right here at the non-volley zone and would have been able to take that ball out of the air. Instead, she stuck back here because, again, she moved backwards. She did not hold her ground, and boom, look at that. That is just a fatal flaw that I have pointed out this entire video. And again, it is this. Fairbanks right here in the near court is very reluctant to play at the non-volley zone. And again, I have to think it is only because she probably has a tennis background and has converted to pickleball from tennis. Now, give her credit. She's playing in the gold medal match. I don't know how many teams were in this division. I don't know how good those other teams were. But the good thing about this match is that David and Julie in the far court are seeing exactly what Fairbanks is doing incorrectly, and they continue to hit it to her when they are serving. When they're hitting a return, they are hitting it to Julie. They are returning it to Julie. They are not hitting it to Carlo. Great move by David and Julie to recognize the weak point on Carlo and Fairbanks' team. Here comes a third shot. Oh, hit the tape. Trying to defend. She cannot reset it. She popped it right up to David. And a very, very easy shot for David to put away. Now the game is very competitive. The team in the near court is actually winning 11 to 10. Earlier, they were ahead 6 to nothing, but the team in the far court has come back. So a very tight match at 11 to 10. Nope. Look at this. The most humiliating shot in all of pickleball. A shot that she had absolutely no chance to get to because she could not reset the ball into the kitchen. Drive after drive after drive. No trying to reset. Oh, right on the line. Goodbye. Let me point out something that I really like about all of these players play. Look at how she is positioned on the court. She has her knees bent. She is in that athletic position. Her paddle is out in front of her, and she is waiting for this shot. So an excellent job by Fairbanks to be in this position, the ready position. This is how you should almost always be on the court. Here it comes. That was a pretty hard hit ball. Unfortunately, she hit it right into the net. And again, you can tell by her body language, she seems to know that this match is going the wrong way. Third shot drive. Fifth shot pop-up. 
Seven shot drive. And uh, just cannot reset the ball, having to back up the entire time. David just put that at Carlos' feet, and he was not able to get it back. Come on. Oh, that's much higher. Great job by Julie in the forecourt. Oh, now she hits it to Carlo. Carlo gets it back. Oh, goodbye. So David and Julie have come all the way back. They are just about to put the match away. Again, they figured it out after getting off to a very slow start. They were behind six to nothing, but they figured out that Julie Fairbanks was positioned in the back of the court almost the entire match. They took advantage of that time and time again, and they are going to win it, I think, on this point right here. Nope, one more point to go. I think the score is 14 to 12, if I'm not mistaken. Again, a very competitive match by very skilled pickleball players at the 4.0 level. Nice get by David. Nice far fight. Oh, right into the net and the match is over. David and Julie in the far court take home the gold. So there you have it, a player who was reluctant to move to the non-volley zone. And the few times she did make it up to the non-volley zone, she did not hold her ground and she retreated. The other team did a great job of recognizing her fatal flaw and they took advantage of it by keeping her back in the court and not allowing her to move up. So when you're playing, be very aware of where your opponent is positioned on the court. If they do not move forward like this player didn't, continue to hit the ball back to them. Do not allow them to move up. In the long run, you will win out. That's all I've got for you today. I really do appreciate you watching. I hope you learned something from watching this video. And if you did, I hope you take the time to like it, subscribe to my channel, and click the notification bell so you'll be notified when I post a new video. That's it from Pickleball Pick Apart. My name is Rory. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the court.